Good afternoon. Welcome to our presentation entitled Use, Use Drone Technology to Improve Accuracy and Efficiency. Our session today is being recorded for playback at a future time. If you are opposed to this for any reason, please disconnect now. My name is Rick Hilton and I am the 3D Scanning Specialist at Synergis Technologies responsible for the reality capture side of the business. Two exciting things have happened in the last several years that allow for safe, quick, easy, and accurate capture of existing conditions. First came laser scanning with HDS scanners. Now we have photogrammetry with drones. We sell both of these items and offer both of them as a service. Today we're going to focus on drone technology and the workflow used for volumetric calculations. There will be time for at the end for Q&A. If you can type your question in the box on the lower right during the presentation, it will speed things along in the end. Presenting today is one of Synergis Technologies application consultants, Kevin Spear. I'm now going to turn the presentation over to Kevin and ask that he introduce himself. Thanks, Kevin. Good morning, everyone. Hi. So I'm Kevin. <laughs> My name is Kevin Spear. I am a licensed professional engineer in Pennsylvania and a few other surrounding states. I am an application consultant here at Synergis. So that means I get to play with all the toys, whether it's software or, in this case, a drone. So I get to play with all the toys. Anyway, so today's topic, drone technology and accuracy and efficiency. Or we're really looking at um, how to calculate things with the information we get from, from the drone photogrammetry. So let's see, get the uh, PowerPoint here to go forward. There we go. Uh, quick agenda. So we'll take a quick overview of what we can do with a drone. Um, what we can do to calculate volumes with Remake, and then what we can do to calculate volumes with Civil 3D. Again, all of this technology uh, on the software side is Autodesk-based, and the drones that we're going to feature today is the 3DR uh, site scan system. And then, of course, we'll leave time at the ends for questions, and of course, hopefully we can provide an answer. Uh, throughout the course of the presentation, feel free to ask a question in, in the uh, question pane. Uh, in the webinar side panel there. And we'll do it that way simply to uh, avoid the feedback loop that tends to happen sometimes when we open up to audible questions. Um, so we'll, with that in mind, uh, why don't I get started? So let me jump over to, uh, let's see, let me jump over to here and actually I want to go to my Autodesk 360 drive. So the, the drone technology that we're using uh, from 3DR, the company is called 3, the number 3DR, has a system where we take pictures with the drone and through their automation they will then upload that data to your 360 drive. So I've got several jobs here as you can see that I've flown. And I'm just going to click into one, and there's some other files in here, but of course here's my uh, folder full of images. So for a given flight, uh, we'll see all the different images that were taken. So I'm flying in this picture at about, I don't know, 200 or so feet above the ground. And in this case, I was taking pictures along this corridor um, specifically, uh, this particular gas station, uh, natural gas station, was being uh, had a a feeder or trunk line, if you will, uh, being replaced, and so we were flying that whole route to to gather information. Now we weren't interested in volumes, but as you may well know, the drones are uh, useful for many many different purposes. So that's that one particular job, right? So in that flight. You'll get pictures, you may, uh, and 3DR has this ability to create other file formats out of that data. Uh, so we have uh, point clouds, we have uh, object files, uh, so the OBJ format, for instance, or FBX, right, case, creates a solid model, uh, as well as in what's called an RCM file, uh, which is for remake. So that's kind of the brief, brief overview of what we do with the drone technology. Now just a quick video of what it looks like. That's the drone with, actually that's a GoPro. We now have an, a Sony camera. 
on attached, attached to the solo. Simply put the propellers on. He's going to launch the app here and tell it where we're going to go. Uh, currently, um, because of the way things are going, we only have that survey mode where we just circle on the tablet where we want to fly. It figures out the flight plan, hit start, and off you go. Really, that's kind of all there is to it. Uh, the only thing you need to do as a pilot is to make sure uh, you're not going to run into things, right? That you're at an elevation where things can happen. And you can see here, um, here's the point cloud, and it's brought into Civil 3D, and you can do all sorts of things with that, which we're going to demonstrate. So that's kind of the, the, the basic idea there. So let me jump over to... Um, the web version of the SightScan app, and I've got um, a sample project here I did. The project's not in Berkeley because I just did it yesterday and I'm on the East Coast, <laughs> so that's not even close. Anyway, all right, so as the data comes up here, you can see uh, the locations of where all the pictures were, and I'll switch it over to the satellite. So the imagery, the background imagery, clearly shows you that uh, that's some sort of farm field. Well, currently, it's a site under construction for uh, commercial, grocery store, restaurant, all that kind of stuff, apartment complex. Anyway, so they have this huge mound of dirt out there, and we'd like to get the volumes on that stockpile of topsoil. So that's where I started, right? So let me go to my local 360 drive and we'll find that flight so there's the flight stockpile and there's uh, some of the different file types so I've got a point cloud and then the, the remake file RCM file so the, the RCM file I'll open inside a remake and we can calculate volumes there and then I'll take the point cloud file the RCS file and bring that into Civil 3D and do the same thing and kind of compare and contrast and I would expect the volumes to not be exactly the same. Obviously, there's two different algorithms in play, uh, but they should generally be in the same ballpark. All right, so let me find Remake. Let me launch that. All right, so Remake, its purpose is to um, create mesh files and work with mesh files from point clouds. Um, no, I thought I hit remake. Let's see if I can get that started again. Oh, there it is. Here it comes. A couple of quick things. It looks at your local computer for files that you may have previously worked on, as well as it's looking at your cloud drive, right? So there's already things in play here. Now, it'll want to download these cloud versions, so you can see there's the stockpile um, RCM file. It already sees that. I downloaded it already, and let's just go ahead and open it. And we'll take a look at what kind of point cloud it created. So not too bad. So here's that side road, and north is generally pointing up here. And you can see there's my stockpile right in the middle. Um, so even if this is all it did, right, I mean, that's, that's a pretty amazing feature to blend all those pictures into that. Now as I spin this around, right, there's my stockpile. It's amazing, right? It's amazing. Now, the amazing part on top of this is that we can calculate the volume of that pretty quickly. So to capture the pictures took me, um, or this area with pictures, likely took me about 15 to 20 minutes. I submit those up to the cloud, and then the 3DR slash Autodesk technology takes over and creates those point cloud files that I mentioned. And that can take some time depending on the number of pictures. I think in this case, this took me roughly two to three hours because of the I created multiple files, not just one. So in relatively short order, in a half a day, I could I could get this particular pile in place. All right, so how do we create volumes out of that stockpile? So I'm going to use my orientation tools here to kind of spin myself around. There we go. And center that up. We've got some tools here kind of hanging on the side and, and across the bottom. Uh, it's not your typical looking application, right? There's no menu system, there's no ribbon, right? It's just kind of a, you know, a mass 3D environment right in front of us. 
So I'm going to start by uh, effectively trying to crop this uh, mesh down to just my stockpile. So we'll kind of do some gross uh, picking here. Oops, I need to pick a little better. Make sure I get the whole pile. And we have these right-click tools where I can select uh, what, what I have and delete or invert what I have selected and then delete, which is getting rid of everything outside of it. And then you may have noticed there's this blue ring. Well, we've got this slice and fill tool. And that gives me the opportunity to do a few things. You can see as my cursor moves inside and out, one allows me to kind of tilt or orbit that this plane that we're trying to attach to the bottom of the pile. And this other tool allows me to kind of raise that, that tilted plane up or down as needed. So if I drag that up and down, you can see right as things grow and fill in. It's really kind of crazy, right? So we get something pretty close. Looks like I might need to tilt it a little bit um, to this one corner. Right, let me raise them over a little bit more. And so within a matter of a, you know, a couple of minutes, we can get something pretty close. Now if I zoom in here, you can see really what we're playing with, right? Um, in this area, you know, they started digging out the pile. A um, little questionable whether that's real or not. Um, and since those are here, of course, I don't want that. And other machinery. And we'll be able to crop that out here in a minute. So this looks pretty good for limiting that area. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that slice. And that'll take away those points. So then I can come back and I can either kind of, you know, window these little pieces that I don't want and delete. Right? Delete. Or I could again do the same thing. Um, I can uh, choose different ways to select this, and maybe this time I want to do a lasso or a fence. So I can pick some points around the outside of my pile. It's a little tough to see because of the blue background, but you'll see it coming into play here. So something like that, maybe. Yeah, I don't want to get the gravel pit. And once I've got my area, I'll press enter. So that's going to select the mound. But like I did before, I can delete the opposite. So there, now I'm down to just my pile. Now the very cool thing, because we did a slice and a fill, if I actually flip this upside down, you can see, right, we've got that. And as soon as I analyze my mesh, it gives me an area. Well or volume of that mass. Now, in this case, oops, sorry, I got ahead of myself there. It's given it to me in cubic millimeters, which is the wrong units. So, initially this data comes from uh, 3DR and the A360 services uh, in meters, not millimeters. So, I'll simply change my units for the project, come back and reanalyze, and there's my volume. So that's my volume, roughly 10,000 cubic meters. And let's see, where's my convert tool, right? Everybody's seen this tool a thousand times. So cubic meters, uh, let's see, 10, 170 is roughly, you know, cubic yards, 13,000 cubic yards. So that's how much dirt's there, right? Do I need to lose that on site or do I need to truck it off? I could even keep track, you know, daily, weekly, or monthly of, you know, how often that pile changes of what dirt's left, what dirt's been brought, all that sort of stuff. So in a matter of, gosh, 15 minutes in its entirety to this point, I've got a, a, a quick volume. Now we'll talk about the accuracy of the volume, right? How accurate is it? Is it 5% accurate? Is it 95% accurate? We'll talk about that. So there, there's my one value, right? A little over uh, 13,000 cubic yards of dirt. So now we'll take a look at volume calculations in Civil 3D. Oops, that's not Civil 3D, that's the web. <laughs> there, uh, let's do it that way, there we go. So a couple of things are on my screen right now. Um, I, I, in, I brought in the point cloud, 
So we can attach a recap point cloud, which is what that RCS file is. And currently what you're seeing is uh, the words point clouds are not displayed in 2D visual style. So that's currently what I'm using. So I could build a surface. So that surface was built from that data from the point cloud. And you can see essentially the same thing, right? Now if I don't want to see this, uh, maybe I want to hide it. So we do have this ability to hide objects in, in, in Civil 3D. So I'll just take and hide that point cloud temporarily. And there's my surface. All I had to do was pick the, the, uh, the, the point cloud and we could add that data to a surface. Or you can go from the Home tab with nothing selected, Surfaces, Create Surface from Point Cloud. That part's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to it. So now that we've got the surface, um, I could create some volumes. So how do we create volumes in Civil 3D? Well, I need a comparison surface. Much like what I did in Remake, except Remake's just kind of doing a plane. Right, well we could do the same thing here. Uh, I could make a, let's turn my O-Snap off for a second. Since I don't have the image in the background, you know, I'm kind of eyeballing where I think the edge of the pile is. So that's one you know, little detriment, I guess you could say. And we'll just do something across there. And out like that. And then all I'm going to do is drape that on the surface. So we'll create a feature line out of it from that object. And I don't care about that part. We'll assign elevations from that surface. And it takes a second. Because it's reading the original surface there. And you know, just like anything live, it's prone to some technical difficulty at some point along the way. So the point was, is once this gets elevation from the surface, I would create a new surface just from this single feature line, which would create that plane for me. And then I could create a volume calculation between those two surfaces. And just like anything live, right, we're going to go to the videotape here and see if we can't Let's see. Uh, so momentarily, I'm going to peek behind the curtain here and, and kill this because clearly something's not working as expected. All right, let's try it one time. All right, so we'll load this back up. This time I'll take less time explaining and just do it, okay? Ironically, this process, as I prepared for it, took seconds. And now that we're doing it in front of an audience, it doesn't work. Okay. So as Civil 3D gets loaded up here, I'll get that drawing back open. Yep. Come on, wake up.
Okay, so looks like I lost my network connection there for a second. So the file just has the point cloud in it at the moment. And how did I get here? Sorry, I don't know if you could see. But from the home tab, went to the surfaces, fly out here, create surface from point cloud. Simply pick the point cloud object. We'll give it a name. That style's fine. Click next. And we've got a point cloud here. So I'll click next. And how do I want to filter it? Uh, typically, we do this interpolation. Um, actually, I don't want to use the whole thing. So let me change this to some other visual style. And what I'd like to do is limit the point cloud to just the stockpile. It'd be good to show that. So how would I go about doing that? Well, first, I need to pick the point cloud. And when you select the point cloud, we get the set of contextual tools in the ribbon. And one of those is to crop. So before I do that, let me get to where I can see something like that. And we'll just do a, a quick crop to make the uh, surface building a little faster. So something like that. And this doesn't have to be super accurate. Again, we're just trying to build something for the purpose of our surface. Okay. Now it's cropped, uh, so I could create surface from, from point cloud here, or I could go back to the home tab and do surface, create from point cloud. It's the same command in both spots. So we'll launch it from there. We'll call this one EG2 since I already started. Again, same thing. Now, what's not apparent is there's far fewer points, so this will go a lot faster. And of course, do the same process, create surface. Now what happens is it actually opens another instance of, of Civil 3D in the background. Uh, to process the creation of that point cloud. So there's a little point cloud symbol down here that tells you the status of what's going on. Creating surface from point cloud in the background. So as that's going, we'll get that call up back, to, back up to speed. Now I'll take a quick look back here and remake. You can see that wasn't a whole lot of effort required to get to that particular version of my stockpile. Now what if I wanted you know, a stockpile volume from maybe the gravel or somewhere else on the site? Well, you can see that I modified this particular file. So typically we would do a save as to not modify the original and then reopen the original to grab the stockpile location from another area. So maybe I'll call this one stockpile uh, topsoil. And then I'll go back, close this one, and reopen my original stockpile. And we'll tilt that back, back up, and you can see I've got the entire site still. Okay. So... Uh, there was uh, some gravel pits right here. A little easier to see if I tilt it, right? So the, the loader there is taking the gravel and spreading it out for the roads they had, that they had hoped to pave today, but a little, a little tough with the weather, so maybe, maybe I'll drive by and see what, how successful they were. So that same process could get applied to this stockpile. Uh, in this case, let's go take a quick peek back at Civil 3D and see where we are. Oops, I was just there. There we go. So I got my original one, but you know, kind of stopped the process before it completed. And you can see that it's still in process. So that'll take a little while. So while, while we're here, uh, Rick, did we have any questions uh, so far? I haven't seen anything come through yet. Okay. Okay. All right.
Okay, so that's going to take a few more minutes. So why don't I run through this process one more time with Remake. So what did I do, right? I did a window to start, generally speaking, around my topsoil pile, and then inverted the selection, kind of make this a little lighter. Then I can go back in and use my slice tool. I right, pick the elevation. Looks like I need to tilt it a little bit. Something like that, maybe. So there's a little bit of play in this. Set our units. And do our analysis. Oops, wrong button. And there we are. So we're roughly 120 cubic meters. Again, going back to our conversion, <laughs> 120 meters gets us roughly 160 cubic yards. So not too bad, right? Pretty quick. Now the conversation is um, between Civil 3D and Remake. Civil 3D is generally going to get us within 1% um, of the volume and Remake is going to get us within 5% um, because of the different uh, algorithms in play. Um, so once I would get a surface out of that that point cloud, uh, the process would be normal uh, as, as normal for anything else. So let me go find um, an example surface. And let's go surfaces. Uh, trying to find something that'll work. Whatever your stockpile was. So in this case, uh, I've got a mound of dirt in a certain area, and as soon as this loads, I'll draw a feature line around it, drape it to create a surface, and it'd be the same process. So let's say, let's see, where are we? So I've got uh, a mound of dirt right here. And I'll just draw a polyline around it, and we'll say, generally speaking, everything along this elevation was flat across this area. So that would go across to this guy. So just tracing along that elevation. Right, so I'm essentially making this feature line flat, but we could do it where it was tilted. That's fine too. And let's go ahead and create a feature line out of that from objects. Right, and I'll just erase it. Uh, I forgot what the elevation is. So that elevation should be 210. So we'll raise that guy up to 210. We'll say E for elevation, 210. Now I'll go build a surface out of that single feature line. So we'll call this base. And 
add that feature line to that surface as a break line. All right, so I've got two surfaces, base and, in this case, existing site. All I've got to do is create a volume surface. There's five different ways to Sunday in Civil 3 to do that. One way is the same way we created the original surface. Go to the same spot, right-click, choose Create Surface. And in this instance, I want to do a tin volume. So this would be stockpile. And my base surface would be the one I just created. And the comparison would be the existing site or existing topo. In this case, either one would work. I'll do existing topo just to make it easy. Compaction, so here we can address for expansion and contraction with our cut and fill factors. And just like that, we get a surface. So there's my stockpile. And let's see what we got here. So in that particular instance, I got roughly 50,000 cubic yards of fill. So how can you see this thing? Uh, let me go back to the properties. And let's go to elevation banding. And there's my depth of cut. And I can even show uh, how much cut is happening at different places. So we can do a range interval, like every foot. And that's going to show you, of course, everything's in fill, right? So here's an area where there's 18 feet of fill or one foot of fill. So all those normal civil 3D things come to a play there with a volume surface. And that's pretty much it. Obviously, there's a little bit more preciseness to the calculation here in civil 3D. But when we're trying to do things from uh, maybe a construction perspective, Right, let's say this as stockpile, but we'll say gravel. In both cases, uh, we can get a volume. But in the case of construction procedures and daily monitoring of a construction site, uh, you know, in a matter of a few hours, we can get an answer as opposed to surveying it even with LIDAR or with normal GPS or total station, right? Data, collect the data, go build your surface, generate your volumes could take the entire day, if not days, just to get one answer. Uh, here we have with photogrammetry, we can get the answer in, in a few hours. And with Remake, uh, we're within 95% uh, of the actual volume. So as long as we understand that accuracy aspect, uh, which typically is okay in these environments because, you know, someone's taking truck and dirt off the site, so we want to be able to pay them accordingly. So if we're within 5%, that usually is a much tighter analysis than uh, what was previously <laughs> occurring, just with Remake. And, of course, if you really wanted to squirrel that down to 1%, we could use Civil 3D. Civil 3D is a little slower because it takes a while to build that uh, tin surface out of the out of the point cloud. Whereas, right out of the box, we're given uh, a mesh, which is what Remake uses. So with that, that is how we do volumes efficiently and accurately in using drone technology. All right, so that brings us to our questions. And let's see what we got in our questions panel. I don't see any questions. Uh, feel free to ask questions as needed. Um, or it may be perfectly uh, understandable. <laughs> it's not terribly difficult. But with drone, with the drone, I can fly a site in 15 minutes, send that up to the cloud, get it processed into uh, 
the mesh file or point cloud as, as needed for application. Right, that, that particular piece takes uh, an hour or so per file type that you want. Look in your A360 folder, you download it to your local computer, use it in Remake or Civil 3D, and off you go. The processes in those two applications take minutes. So do we have any questions? Oh, there's one. Can you show how you uploaded the images and created the 3D model? So I can, sort of. <laughs> Let me see if I can go back to my web browser. So what happens, um, let me see if I can find a picture. So on the app, uh, when the job finishes, it'll show a button for the job that says download pictures. What does that mean? So back on the drone, if I get a picture somewhere in there. So on the drone is a memory card. And that's wirelessly connected to the, the handheld controller right there. So both the tablet and the drone connect Wi-Fi to the controller. So the app says, hey, we finished the job. The drone understands that. And there'll be uh, a button there that says to get pictures from the drone. So basically we're downloading the pictures from this memory card to the onboard memory of the tablet. Once that's complete, that button flips to say upload to the cloud. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> and then what you see is, uh, let me go back here. Once you upload it to the cloud, you'll see a, a job like this. And I come to the job data page, and I tell it to process the job. Now, you can see that I've already processed the job for uh, different formats. But I'll click the button. And it's as simple as that. Pick our format and give that particular process a name. So if I wanted to say, you know, stockpile2, for instance, pick my format that I care about. So LAS is a generic point cloud format where RCS is recaps point cloud format that feeds automatically into AutoCAD, Civil 3D, and other Autodesk products. Um, an ortho uh, TIFF image. Uh, where it stitches all the pictures together into one geo-referenced image. Um, FBX and OBJ are model files. So FBX is a exchange format for things like 3ds Max. Uh, OBJ is more universal across many applications. So you could say check all and generate models. And once that happens, you'll see a new process listed. And so this name is what you see uh, in your, excuse me, A360 folder. So you can see right there, there's my current name. And if I go back there, open the drive, you will see that's the name of the, of the folder inside of your A360 drive. So as things get processed, they get uploaded to your drive. So you can see it's already syncing, right, <laughs> instantly. So it's throwing up the images that it's needed for that process. Um, all that stuff kind of happens in the background. The only thing I had to do was sign into this site scan app, which uh, is given to you, as well as logging into your A360 account right there. So it take, requires two different logins at the moment. So they can identify you both from uh, 3DR's perspective, which is the site scan app, and Autodesk's perspective, which is your A360 account. So there, it's started the, the recap project file. It's no size yet, right? So over the next you know hour or so, it'll fill those in, fill the images in, and then you'll come back in a couple hours, and the data is there. It's really that complicated. All right. Uh, you're welcome. You can see also on the job here uh, where the pictures generally were taken. All right, so that's where that picture was. I can pick on one and go, what did you see there? And pick on the image, and there we go. That's what it actually saw in that location. Now, 
it's pixelated right now simply because of my bandwidth is a little slow for some reason. But you can pick on each one of these pictures, uh, locations, and see the, the data that was taken in that spot. There we go, much better. So this is the corner of the stockpile right there. So these are begin as 2D 20 megapixel images, roughly 200 feet above the ground, and with the camera pointing straight down at the ground. And that process of, uh, when we say process job, stitches all the images together to create those different file formats. Um, it really is starting to turn into magic <laughs> in that regard. Okay. Oops. Too far out. Uh, any other questions? Okay, great. Well, Rick, uh, is there anything else that you would like to uh, point out or bring up? Yeah, you know, actually, the only thing I'd say regarding the question side is, does anybody have any question about all of the rules and regulations on flying a drone? Um, back in August, the whole world changed on what the requirements are. Does everybody feel comfortable? Are there any questions regarding that? So I don't see anything coming in on that. So uh, I, I guess we're good to wrap it up. Okay, great. Well, thanks everyone for attending, of course. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact me, uh, kevin.spiritsynergist.com, and uh, uh, shoot me a quick question about whatever you need to know. Uh, maybe it's something you didn't quite remember, or maybe you thought of a different question later on, but feel free to, to reach out to us uh, to get further answers. And with that, we thank you for attending.